Now today we're looking at an EVAP canister purge valve, specifically how to locate it, test it, and if you have to, replace it on your vehicle. If you're curious on what this does, I will list a detailed explanation in the description box below, but in simplistic terms, just to make this quick so we can jump right into it, there's a little valve in here. And once the engine warms up, this little valve opens up and clean air, it allows clean air to be sent to the EVAP canister, which is a rectangular box you have located at the rear of the vehicle with charcoal inside. And the charcoal holds fuel vapors. And once the engine warms up, it, the computer tells this valve to open, clean air is sent to the EVAP box, and then the fuel vapors in this box is sent to the engine to be burned off. That's it. Uh, so it doesn't leak in the atmosphere, the fuel vapors. That's all that this guy does. So hopefully that didn't, did not confuse you too much, but uh, I think it's important just to know what this does. But uh, let's go. Now for this Honda, the valve lives in the engine compartment on the driver's side. But up on top here, there's so many things in the way. We have a cruise control cable, throttle cable. This is the upper radiator hose. We have ABS lines, brake lines. It's just so messy. So the better way to get access to it is from underneath. So now, of course, we're underneath the vehicle at the same location. And based on that schematic that we found online, right here is a purge joint. And if I follow this hose, it's very, very hard to see, but I'll clean this up. This hose right here leads to the valve. So I need to remove this hose that leads to the valve. So I just have a little clamp here, and then we can peel back this hose. Okay, just to show you what I'm doing here with my hands, not using pliers because this is just a very uh, light duty clamp, just moving back this clamp. And then to break this connection, these are hose, hose pliers. I'll have a link in the description box below in case you do need these. Really nice to have it. It doesn't hurt the hose. And then we just want to break the connection, okay? So once you remove the hose, we're now going to hook up a vacuum tester. Very, very easy to use because we need to see if the valve up here is holding pressure. So this is a very basic vacuum pump that I purchased a couple years ago off Amazon. It's terrific because you can test valves like this, you can bleed brakes, which I've shown before in the past using this tool, so it's a really nice thing to have. So simply, we just need vinyl hose, an adapter, and you'll see how easy, if you've never used one of these before, very, very easy to use. So I just have the vinyl tubing here, just place it on the tool, and then I have an adapter, place that here. So here's the vacuum pump. Follow the tubing, and as you can see, the adapter just plugged into that hose right there. So now, we're going to turn on the ignition key. So we're not starting the car, just turning on the ignition key. So now we're going to add vacuum to the valve and see if it holds. If it does, the valve is in good shape. Now, don't overdo it, just a little bit. You don't want to break anything. And as you can see, this is holding vacuum perfectly fine. So if you had, for example, a small leak EVAP code, you know that this valve is in good shape, you can go on to the next component to test. So this is quite easy to do at home. But let's say, for example, you're trying to add pressure and you're getting, or vacuum, you're trying to add vacuum and this is what you're getting. And you need to replace the valve, let's go ahead and tackle that. So removing the valve actually isn't too bad. Before we were at this angle showing the purge joint, this actually may be a better angle for you guys now that I'm discovering this. So right there on the left is still the purge joint, but if you follow this hose all the way up, this is the valve, and there's a metal tab on the valve right there, okay? That just sits on the firewall right up there. So you just remove it from that mount. I have a rubber hose right here and then we can place it on the bench. And then finally, we have the valve on the bench. Just a couple of things I just want to mention. If you are familiar with my videos, I do apologize regarding the lighting. I tend to get really good lighting. I know I'm very conscious about that, but unfortunately, this section of the engine, no light can really filter in. And although I do have a light on the camera, it, it incredibly 
difficult to get a good view on this inside or when it's attached to the vehicle. So I do apologize about that, but I think this gives you a general idea on how to do this. Secondly, always go with the factory parts. Incredibly important. So in this case, it's Denso made in Japan. Do not go cheap on valves and especially sensors. You will pay more in the long run. Take my word for it because they will not last nearly as long as the factory stuff, okay? So get the factory components. And thirdly, if you do have trouble code 1456, I'm going to keep on adding things you can check. So the next video will be uh, for the EVAP bypass solenoid valve, and then uh, we'll do something else. So you can just slowly start going through these things, and hopefully you can find uh, where the problem is. And as always, thank you for watching.